BioBalance HealthCast, episode 100, Hirsutism in Women, the Impact of Dihydrotestosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So we were looking at family albums the other day, and, and I saw a picture of myself. I don't know if you, if you remember the movie Blazing Saddles, but of course. <laughs> in the movie Blazing Saddles, there's, there's a picture on Governor Lepetamine's wall of a wedding, mm-hmm. and it's from the back of the bride and groom, uh-huh. and uh, looking out at the audience, which is really atypical for wedding pictures, but. <laughs> Uh, we were looking at some pictures, and, and, and we were at a friend's wedding, and uh, my friend and his friend were kneeling at the altar, and I'm looking at his friend, and I'm thinking, that should be me, but I didn't recognize myself because there was a big hole in the back of my head. There was no hair, and I didn't know that I was losing <laughs> my hair until I saw that picture. And, uh, it's hard to tell when it's the back of your head. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't see the back of my head, but then I got the photograph where I saw the back mm-hmm. of my head, and so I became aware. But you aware. weren't marrying this friend. You were just at no, the I was a No, I was his best man. <laughs> we just want yeah. to make that clear. Yeah, I wasn't marrying him. Uh, I was participating in his, his marriage. His wedding. Uh, and, and shortly after that conversation, my young son came in, all excited because he had seen an ad on television, Ron Popeil's oh, yeah. spray on yeah, hair. Spray on and he's like, Dad, this is what you need. And you know, it really hurt my feelings <laughs> that he was aware and yeah. that I was losing my hair. And and what I've noticed is as I lose the hair on the top of my head, it like goes down my mm-hmm. neck and my shoulders and my chest and I'm fuzzing out. So You I have was, only one hormone to, to uh, blame for that and that's called dihydrotestosterone. Which I think is an interesting, you know, God has a sense of humor. Dihydrotestosterone is the same hormone that puts hair on women's faces, uh-huh. takes hair off men's heads, and then puts it on their back. Same hormone. Very interesting. So we're talking today, we, we originally had a request uh-huh. to talk about hirsutism, which means facial hair in women or hair in the wrong places in women. Like... Facial hair, chest hair, abdominal hair, because usually women don't have abdominal hair down the center of their abdomen, chest, <laughs> breast so that hair. Old, that old joke that men say to each other when they you know, like, drink this, it'll put hair on your chest. Right. Uh, yeah, it, well. It really does happen for women, <laughs> but no, not from drinking not something. Exactly, okay. Not exactly. You have to have the genes for it, actually. You could give a lot of DHT. That's the key. You, have, you could give a lot of this hormone to... A woman, and if she doesn't have the receptor sites in those areas, okay? Okay. And she doesn't have enough of the DHT, but it's both. It's both the hormone and the receptor sites. If you genetically don't have sites to receive it, right. you're not going to grow hair it's not there. It's going to be an issue. But, okay. but there are some women who have receptor sites on their chest, breast, abdomen, okay? Right. And they have this issue. So part so of... So that's where fuzzy navel comes from. I guess. I'm not exact... I... Ugh. I think we saw a lot of those when I was in the, when I was working at, as a doctor at the VA. There was yeah, a lot of fuzzy lot navels of fuzzy there. Navels it there. wasn't hair. Yeah. Anyway, I, I thought it was a drink, <laughs> and it was a drink, but yeah. it's not very so, appealing. So DHT is a metabolite of right. testosterone, which is a byproduct of testosterone. Metabolite okay. means byproduct. All right, so it's an ingredient that breaks down so that it can be uh, excreted excreted from your body. Right, and, and DHT is something that both men and women, as we age, make more of. So even if our testosterone is dropping in terms of our blood level right. and in terms of our making it, our DHT is going up. And therefore, we, get, we have less sex drive, yet we get facial hair. Yeah. You know, people don't really get that, and, and it's very complicated, but your testosterone is what gives you your sex drive, not your DHT. And, and your DHT is what gives you your facial hair. So in some of the podcasts, you talk about uh, genetic issues that affect regional populations, like Mediterranean populations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this one of those kind of things, or is it just random? So No, it's, it, it follows different populations. And, of course, the hairier people mm-hmm. are usually around the Mediterranean. And the people who are 
in the northern latitudes have a finer kind of hair. They mm -hmm. don't have as, as coarse a hair, and they have fewer receptors for it, usually, okay. in general. Uh -huh. But the Nords are a little different. They, have, they do have a lot of body hair, facial hair, the whole, the whole bit, but the women have a very soft, blondish Kind well, and hair. that's the thing about facial hair on women. Some, right. some of it is a, like a peach fuzz that right. they develop, mm -hmm. and some of it is they'll get one or two or five black hairs that'll grow in mm -hmm. that they can pluck with tweezers. Right. And some mm -hmm. actually get a mustache. I mean, they get a more yeah. defined mustache. So uh, is all that differentiation driven by how much DHT they have? It's the DHT and it's the receptor sites, which are then are genetic. Like if you saw my big fat Greek, Greek wedding, uh -huh. all the women are running around the day before the wedding with bleach on their upper lip. I forgot okay, that. Okay, that's yeah. a Greek, Italian, Sicilian, Southern, Spanish thing. I mean, I remember doing that. I don't have that issue So do your mothers now. teach you to bleach your lips? If my mother had been Italian, she would have, but my mother was Lithuanian, didn't have a hair on her body. I mean, she was freaked out by the hair that, that I grew because I'm Sicilian. So, I mean, yeah. she's like, I can't tell you anything. I don't shave my legs. I don't have any idea how you do this. Go ask your friends. You know, so usually mothers will tell you how to do that. But if your mother has my a mother different... My mother told me how to shave my legs. Yeah. Oh, did she? Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, actually, no, she... <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't, but... But I guess I want to make it clear that it's testosterone that makes DHT. And, D and it's it's way of getting testosterone out of the body when we're done with it. Mm -hmm. But DHT still has activity all over our body. And our sensitivity to it actually goes up as we get older. So, you know, the hair on men's ears and oh, yeah. stuff. In their nose and in their yeah. ears. You see old guys. And somebody yeah. needs to tell them, trim your nose hairs. You know, <laughs> trim your ear hairs. And so get if this you know big... anybody like that... Tell them to trim Tell it. Tell them and nicely, then, but though. But you just know it's DHT and it could happen to you. Yeah. You know, so you don't want to be too judgmental because all of these things could happen to you. My husband used to say, oh, look at that guy. He lost all his hair and he's kind of joking about it. And I'm like, "Yeah, you're the next one. Well, my hair's falling off the ha top of my head and my chest is falling. <laughs> no, well, I, I figure if you <laughs> if you criticize somebody for something or you make fun of them, yeah. then that's going to happen to you and it usually does. It's sort so of now he's like, What's up? Do I have any hair up here? So, so you, you know, are it's a big deal for both women and men. Women oh, are yeah. very, they're very, uh, they feel unfeminine with facial hair. They feel like that's that's a, a comment on who they are, or how much how much yeah. they you know how feminine they are. If they're macho they or masculine or yeah, feminine, they yeah. don't feel attracted with facial hair generally. There are some populations that do, but in the U.S., generally, that's not a good thing. And we spend millions and billions of dollars getting rid of our facial hair or our body hair, any of that in the U.S. So it's a huge industry. But there are lots of ways that we can go about controlling facial hair in women and then we'll separately take men in terms of balding and that well, kind yeah, of thing. Well, yeah, you were talking about side effects from too much DHT in right. women and in men. Right. And the list for women, the first item on the list is male pattern baldness. Right. So, what so, is if you, so you, if you have facial hair, then you have a high risk of getting baldness up here. Now, if it's bilateral on both sides of your head, then that's start, that's male pattern baldness. So, so is that truly bald, or is it like really thin? Where it's you can really see the thin. scalp through. It's really thin, but there are some women who lose all their hair here, yeah. and then they have baldness up on the crown of their head. Okay. So that's male pattern baldness. Now, if all your hair is thin, that is thyroid, not enough estrogen. It's not male pattern. It's that's all the hair. But if okay. it's just here and here, that's DHT. And so we have to attack the right thing. You don't want to be taking the wrong medicine or putting the wrong thing on your on your head because you have you're treating the wrong thing. You'll mm -hmm. miss treating the right thing. Mm -hmm. So so that's when, when women have this and this, we see it in young women who have polycystic ovaries. They have a lot of they have a lot of DHT. They have a little more testosterone than most women. And they have um, sex hormone binding globulin is a globulin that inactivates testosterone and DHT. And it's very low in those women. So there's a lot more active. So they have that. They have cysts on their ovaries. They have insulin resistance. They gain weight. They get facial hair. They have breast hair. They have belly hair. It, it's, it, it like flips on when they're in their teens usually. And it's a scary change. They like become an entirely different body. But the driving symptom of that is that they have polycystic ovaries. Right. That it's the it's a genetic 
a combination mm -hmm. that that some people have more of the baldness, some people mm -hmm. have more of the obesity, some people have no obesity, infertility is a common thread. So when you treat postmenopausal women who don't have polycystic ovaries. Mm -hmm. and well, their ovaries are kind of quiet then. And you treat them and you give them testosterone. Mm -hmm. And they start to develop some of the symptoms on this list. It's, mm -hmm. it's a chemistry set kind of, mm -hmm. well, we have to tweak this or tweak that. Mm -hmm. so, so what are the things that you do? A woman comes in and she says, my, I'm thinning hair. I'm getting some on my lip. Mm -hmm. uh, other uh, symptoms that you have. Oily skin and acne. Oily skin and acne, increased mm -hmm. body odor, increased perspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, if she comes in and says, all this is happening to me. Mm -hmm. How, how do you respond? That's all, uh, that's all DHT, and DHT comes from testosterone being converted into DHT. Mm -hmm. So we either block the DHT at the skin level, which is by giving somebody um, spironolactone. It's a diuretic. We've talked about it before, but it works great at preventing facial hair and balding in women. And that's a pill that you that's take? That's a pill. It's cheap. Okay. It's generic. And it's a diuretic. If you can't take a diuretic, that's our only issue. Okay. So that's what we give women to block that. If they have a severe case, if okay. they have more receptors, mm -hmm. or they have hairs that are closer together, you know, people who have really thick, dense hair, then we oftentimes start with finasteride, which is also called Propecia or Proscar. And we now have them in our pellets if we need them. If somebody has that much of a problem, we have them mixed in the pellets or you can take a pill. And usually for women, we have them take half of the male dose every other day. Mm -hmm. The male dose is five milligrams. It's cheap and generic. The female dose is one milligram every day, but it's very expensive and it's not generic. It's the same drug. So we have them take- Which is the politics of, yes, of the of, FDA and marketing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, or dry cleaning. Your mm -hmm. shirts are cheaper to, to dry clean than mine. Well, that's because my, bu it's the that's same my buttons are on the right side. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the politics of a lot of things. <laughs> so, uh, in any case, when, when, we have, um, when we have this issue, we either use this oral pill, and we use it half every other day, so two and a half milligrams every other day, or we put it in the pellets, and then everybody gets their, they get baby hairs here, you know, and they start seeing it start uh, growing and you're not going to see hair grow like overnight mm -hmm. but you'll see little tiny baby hairs that yeah. they that are starting to grow in those areas and then they get their full head of hair back that blocks the production of dht testosterone does not become as much of the dht now you need some dht we don't want to block all of it because dht allows us to have orgasms so there's some good things about it and in men ejaculation so we don't want to get rid of all of it we just need to get rid of a, a little bit of it. I mean, we just need to have a little bit of it. So you explain this to women, and I'm sure you have to explain it repetitively. We have it written and I explain it. So, yeah. so it's written, so visual learners can read it on a handout right. and read it at the website. And we can also, we, I also discuss it with them all the time. That's kind of a conversation while they're getting their pellets. Well, I'm getting a little bit more hair on my legs and my a little bit more on my arms and mm -hmm. I haven't experienced that but a lot of women do and mm -hmm. and so we deal with that kind of sometimes at the beginning of the treatment in the middle on the fly if they've got that problem we treat them and that is very low risk to treat that yeah so low risk of any other side effects. of any other side effects okay. now there's a couple of things we also suggest if people don't want to take a pill we have um, we have an S estradiol, which is estrogen. We have an estrogen uh, um, compounded gel that you can rub into your hair in mm -hmm. the areas that you're losing it because that helps counteract the DHT. And how often would you do that? Every The night before you wash your hair, you know, like every other day, every third day, or if okay. every day if you wash your hair every day, but you'd rub it into the area. So while you're sleeping, then the hair follicles are exposed to estrogen, which which fills those those receptor sites, and it bumps the DHT off. It's I, not gross. It's just no, no. I'm just, just smiling like because just... women are acculturated to pay attention to their bodies and pay attention to these things, and so it's a reasonable thing to say to a woman: you do this every other day before you wash your hair, or you take this pill every other day. Men don't pay attention. I Men know. are not acculturated to pay attention. Thank God you guys they don't have vaginas so because we have up. to have women put stuff in their vaginas all the time. Like creams, don't go there. <laughs> like creams and, and, and you know, tr 
antibiotics. And I mean, we're like, okay, every other day for the. And, and men would and women not do that. pay attention to that. I mean, they don't. We have to. Yeah. No, I. I Otherwise, we'll that. look like you guys. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's let's so shift those are, to men so those, with the Well, issues. one more thing, you can okay. also get your hair removed permanently. Okay. So if you have dark hair on your face uh -huh. and you're female and you don't want to have it, you have to go through a series of laser treatments. And we even have that. We have a laser at our office for that very purpose. So if you, so you can get rid of that that way. If, if, you, if you have too much DHT and it's causing you to have hair growth right. that you don't want, mm -hmm. if you have the laser treatment, you remove those hair follicles permanently. In that area and then or that, that area. The amount of DHT that you have won't, can't cause that anymore. Right, but it isn't going to help your hair grow. Okay? Right. So you can use, women use minoxidil. Women use estrogen. Men don't use estrogen. Of course, and then women um, also can use Vanic, Vanica, Vanica, which is a cream that shuts down the hair follicles right at, on the face. Uh -huh. So you could use that as well. There's lots of ways to do this. Okay. It's just, and, and women have many more ways to do this because they're much more motivated than so, so men So as you are. go back to the decision matrix, mm -hmm. fundamentally, if you don't replace testosterone, if you don't replace the hormones that you need, you open yourself up for all kinds of disabilitating and deteriorating illnesses mm -hmm. as you age. Mm -hmm. If you do replace it. And no sex it, life. And no sex <laughs> life, which is one of those. Which is a huge issue. Yeah. And if you do replace it, you may have some side effects that certainly emotionally are not minimal. If you're one of these women that react mm -hmm. to this and, and it's like, oh my God, this is horrible, I can't have this. Mm -hmm. but. It's not an either or trade off. It's not like, okay, so I can't replace the testosterone and I'm going to have all these other problems. It's I can do it, but I have this side effect and this side effect is treatable. Right. And, and it, there are multiple treatments. Right. There, there are multiple treatments for this one problem. And when we give you testosterone, you're taking, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a scale. You know, you're basically taking one problem and then you're, the weight of the problems that you're getting rid of is huge. Right. Okay, so one problem, facial hair, big deal compared to depression, anxiety, uh, loss of muscle mass. Osteoporosis, osteoporosis, Alzheimer's. Loss of ability to think. Balance. Mood changes, yeah. divorce, no sex life for the rest of your life, vaginal dryness, painful sex. I mean, all of those things kind of outweigh a little facial hair. When someone says, oh, that's a deal breaker, I'm like, well, then you must not feel very well, you know, badly. You can come back when you feel badly because it's if facial hair is a deal breaker, yeah. you're not feeling you're bad not enough feeling to, bad to enough. get well, your And you just, you just chuckled when you said divorce, you know, as if it's, it's unreasonable funny, that that's a side effect. But there's actually data out recently in the news that the divorce rate among the elderly population is skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's getting close to 50%. Right. Uh, of people 16 over or because women over. feel you know without testosterone we go oh we don't need we don't need a partner we don't need anybody because you know that just takes away our need for yeah. the opposite sex and then men are like well deal changed okay mm -hmm. not that marriage should be based like that but no, some but marriages are very is... weighted towards sexual activity and if it's not there then the marriage itself is kind of disintegrating. Yeah. So we've talked about that before. Right. So in any case, there is an answer to this for women. It is not the same for every single person. It depends on what you want to do. And, and some people are like, just put the pellet in. I don't want to think about it. And then it's over. Well, so, and, and so another side message in this is it comes back to the skill of the physician that's providing the treatment. You know, if they have the knowledge that Kathy has from over 10 years of doing this, mm -hmm and all of the experience with thousands, literally, of women who have been able to come in and you've been able to track the data to say, well, how many have this and how many have that and what do they respond to? If you've got somebody that's just suddenly gotten on the, the replacement bandwagon yeah. and started to offer the services, they may not know these things. They don't. And they don't know these things. And, they're, and it's, it's sad to hear people come in and they've got a beard full of hair because they've been taking the wrong yeah. testosterone and no one has helped them prevent it. And oh, by the way, don't ever shave your face, ladies, right. ever. I don't care what anybody says. Otherwise, you're going to be kissing your husband and you're going to have more stubble than he does. I mean, it turns into stubble. You just don't want to do that. Right. You know, depilatories, all of those things, waxing, do that. Just pull it out by the roots. Don't shave it. 
But that's one of the reasons that we do these podcasts, because we want this information to be out there for you to become an informed consumer. A better educated consumer can, with their physician, make mm -hmm. better health care decisions. And so if you are going to a physician somewhere and considering hormone replacement treatment, even if they're doing pellets, then you will have this information and you can say, what are we going to do about this if it's a problem? And if your doctor doesn't know, then that's a heads up for them to find out. Right. They can watch the podcast. They yeah. can look up the medicines. They have access to all the information on the medicines right. that we've discussed, and they can use them as well. So, I mean, they already know about these medicines. They just don't use them for this reason. Right. So, in any case, do you want to um, go on with the men's treatments, or should we do that on a different Let's podcast? Let's do that for a different podcast. Let's okay. All right. All right. So, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.